Peter Pan and Wendy is on Disney Plus. And uh, should you go out and see it? Uh, or should you put it up on your uh, TV screens? Well, I'll tell you this. I didn't hate this movie. And that's a step in the right direction, right? Uh, a lot of people didn't like the trailers for this. They said there's casting issues in this. Uh, I didn't have anything wrong with the casting. Um, I didn't know if it was going to be like a, a retelling of it, um, like a requel, but it sort of was. It was based on J.M. Barry's novel, Peter and Wendy, and inspired by the 1953 animated classic. So it took elements from two things there. Peter Pan and Wendy is the timeless tale of a young girl who, de defying her parents' wishes to attend a boarding school, travels uh, with her two younger brothers to the magical Neverland, where she meets uh, a boy who refuses to grow up in Peter Pan. Now, um, Wendy is played by Ever Anderson, daughter of Mila Jovovich, who was in Fifth Element, and she really looks like her mother. Jude Law is Captain Hook in this, and Alexander Maloney is Peter Pan. So, it deals with a couple of issues in there with uh, the mother and daughter, like uh, Wendy, kind of like uh, being a little bit rebellious, refusing to taking on certain responsibilities, but then she goes to one Neverland there and uh, learns that, yeah, she wants to be a little bit more mature and stuff like that and take on a little bit more responsibility. So I like that stuff. Uh, there were some really good uh, ideas between Peter Pan and Hook. Like they were once friends and then Hook grew up, but they just kind of lacked in their execution of that. Um, I felt like they didn't do enough to establish that as uh, a storyline that could have had like the payoff look it's kind of like they they had the payoff for the big scene between peter pan and hook like you used to be my friend um that kind of stuff and they didn't set that up properly in the story um to have that big payoff in the end where yeah, i should have felt that right um and um that's what i mean that it lacked in its execution so let's go over to the tomato meter and see what people were saying about this um 67% by the critics, 20% by the audience. Now, uh, because it's on Disney+, Plus, I don't know if the audience have to actually prove that they've seen it, so I wouldn't really trust the audience score on this because this is a movie where people did watch the trailers for this and then uh, the backlash regime, the outrage culture, cancel culture regime came out and said, oh, you changed some of the Lost Boys um, to include some girls in it. It's kind of like, you are changing my childhood. And it's like, get out of here with that nonsense. The Lost Boys didn't really play that big part of the story, so I don't see why you're getting your feathers ruffled in this. <gasps> you made Peter Pan someone of color. You made uh, Tinkerbell someone of color. But actually, I really liked what they did with Tinkerbell in this. Um, I thought it was really good casting uh, in that respect. Uh, yeah, there's Wendy. And I felt like she did a good job too. I was like, wait a minute, she's holding her own with Dude Law as an actress. So she's got a talented future ahead of her, uh, this uh, ever. Anderson. Uh, Tiger Lily. Yes, we just talked about this. Tiger Lily, they did uh, they did her justice in this one. She didn't live with the Lost Boys or anything like that. And she actually spoke Cree in this. So I kind of respected that. And we saw scenes with her going off to live with her own nation. But I felt like while they were in Neverland, we never really got to go out and experience all the other places in Neverland because you got the impression towards the end that yes they were trying to drive home that Peter Pan and Captain Hook are necessary elements to Neverland we just don't know how because we don't see those other places how does Peter Pan affect uh Tiger Lily's nation how does Hook affect the the commerce and stuff like that in Neverland like they're pirates and stuff but you you don't really get to see that and uh, it just felt like it was missing a note here and there for me. Uh, it's from the director who did The Green Knight and such. So at certain times, the, sh the shot composition in it was breathtaking. Um, like his his choice of shots, um, especially a lot of the flying stuff. Uh, a lot of the flying stuff mixed in with some of the backgrounds, like the plates that they were using. Uh, it worked for me. And, uh, of course, yeah, them riding horses out uh, along this coastline, which was beautiful. Um, my biggest criticism when we did our full live watch along for it was that look like, look where they are. It's like this, if they did some color correction here and made this, the greens pop, like really like vibrant, 
then I think that would have helped to establish Neverland. But everything had this kind of washed out uh, color grading to it that I felt kind of took away from it a little bit. And I think they were trying to do that because they were trying to hide the fact that they, they shot a lot of this on green screen stages or what we commonly know now as the volume. So uh, I felt like Jude Law was a decent Captain Hook. Um, I think he was having fun with that role. He wasn't, he wasn't my criticism in it. Uh, it was just mostly story issues. I like what they did with the crocodile too. Um, I thought he was going to get him at the end. Oops, sorry. Well, you guys know how that, that's supposed to work, right? Um, overall, guys, my thoughts for Peter Pan and Wendy on Disney Plus, I think is worth watching. On Disney Plus, it is worth watching. Because it's on Disney Plus, you're not paying anything more or extra for it. It's a quick 90 minutes. Uh, I wouldn't give it a uh, low as a 20%, but I think I give it a 6.5 in my review for it that I did at the end of my full live watch along that's up on the channel now. I think I gave it a 6.5 because it does have some story issues in there. Uh, it's not something that I would jump back to go watch again, um, but it's... It's not, it's nowhere near as terrible as some people out there, as the outrage culture people will try to convince you that it is. So there you go. That's my thoughts on Peter Pan and Wendy. If you guys seen it, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Mirror Domains. All right, so that'll be cut out and put up on the uh, channel later on. Let's take some live comments here. Uh, Wifer says, the biggest problem with Peter Pan and Wendy, the kids were boring and the film didn't take risks. Yeah. It had some good set pieces, though. It, it, it did. Like when, when they're in the cave there and they're trying tying up the kids to the rock and stuff. Um, Peter Pan and, and Wendy was very good. I recommend it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's something that's not too offensive. Like, I, I didn't find it that offensive. Uh, I didn't feel like it was too distracting. It was interesting. That's all you think you can do when you look at these uh, different interpretations of things is that uh, when you're looking at how they adapt this type of material, it's kind of like, I'm just looking to see what they do different and stuff like that by making Tinkerbell not talk and stuff like that. That's what you're looking for. And I, I, I like that stuff. Um, did this Peter Pan, his iteration, make me go, wow, you got to check out this guy's Peter Pan. Not really. He was just there. I think he did what he was supposed to do. It just didn't, his pan didn't jump off the page at me, right?